Simplify the square root of 148 for me. Face forward, please. Remember the procedures? What's the first thing you have to do? Factorize. What does that mean? So you take the 148 and break it down to its smallest pieces. What's, when I say prime factor, what is a prime number? Yeah, a number that is only divisible by one and it's not very good. For example, is one a prime number? Yeah. Is two a prime number? Is three a prime number? Is four? No. Because it's made up of two times two also. It's made up of one times four and two times two. Uh, how about five? Yes. Six? No. Seven? No. Oh, so, yeah. So you see the concept. We want to break it down to its smallest numbers that can't be broken down any further. So since it ends in an even number, we know it's divisible by what? Two. So we know two goes in there. Two goes into 14 seven times. Two goes into eight. Four times. 74 can be broken down further because it ends in an even number. Who goes on to 7 how many times? How many left over? 1. So 2 goes on to 14. Thirty-seven. We broke it any further. So we know that square root of one forty-eight is made up of two times two times thirty-seven. Nope. Because it's a square root, once you find two of a kind, it comes out. And there's your answer. You're looking for a pair of numbers. Once you find a pair of numbers, that number goes out in front. This is how exponents and square roots are connected. Or in general, radicals. and so on and so forth. A radical is anything with this symbol. Some, some other add on stuff because it, instead of just square roots, there's a lot more to it than just square roots. There's nothing here. This number here, inside that little V area, it's got a name. It's called the root. If it has a three there, it's called a cube root. It's 
got a four, it's called the fourth root. It's got a five, it's called the fifth root. If there's nothing there, if there's nothing there, it's an implied two. That's why it's called a square root. So far so good? The root tells us the number of times a value must be repeated before it can be removed from the radical. Again, the root tells us how many times the number of value has to be repeated before we can take it out. Is this? Is it a cube root? Is it a fifth root? It's a square root. So it needs a number has to be repeated twice. Once it once it's repeated twice, it goes outside. So it's gone from here. And there's nothing else inside there, so the answer is two. Yes. So why did you put the two? Here? Yeah. Because, well, really it's written like this. What I'm saying is there's an implied two there. Okay. Because everything else, like if I had square root or cube root of eight, eight is made up of two times two times two. It happens three times, so can I remove that too? Yeah. yeah. It goes out in front. So there's nothing left inside there. So all that goes in front. So that disappears. The answer is two. Sense? I'm recording all this stuff anyway, so you don't have to. I'm, I'm taking pictures, and all this stuff will be recorded and sent to you. So you don't have to take pictures or anything. Everybody okay with that so far? So the root tells us how many times we need to have a number repeated. The root of 18. I'm going to get to the point where we're going to connect exponents and radicals, how they work together. So what's this answer going to give us? Yeah. What's the first step you have to do? Take the number and prime factorize it. So 18 is made up of what? 2 times 9 or 6 times 3, it doesn't matter. What is 9 made up of? So 18 is made up of 2 times three, times three. Made up of two, times three, times three. It's a square root. Do we have a pair of numbers? Yeah, the three. So the threes can go out in front. And there's your answer. Yep. Or to 60.
So 60 is made up of what? 30 times 2, okay. So 30 is made up of? Times 10, so this is as far as it goes. That's what, 10 is made up of? So 60 is made up of 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Here's a pair, so they go out in front. Three times five is? Make sense? Right. I lost you there. We'll, we'll do a bunch more of these. You know, yes. What's confusing in this one? Okay. That, that work also. Because no matter what you do, if you do 6 times 10, this breaks down to 2 times 3. Yeah, then I got 2 times 5. Okay. You still get 2, 2, 3, and 5. Okay, so... Like a lowest to high? Here? Yeah. It makes it easier, yeah. So once you do this, once you prime factorize it, then yeah, start with the lowest, so you, so you can see, because if you didn't, if you put two, three, two, five, you may not see a pair of numbers. So I start off, are there, how many twos do I have? I have one, two. How many threes? How many fives? So, yeah, so, yeah, arrange it in, in smallest to largest, so you can see any, any repeating numbers. It, it, there is no wrong way. Yeah. There, is no, there is no wrong way. You can start with a 6 and a 10. You can start with 30 times 2. You can start 15 times 4. The only thing you can't do is 60 times 1. <laughs> Forever. Let's look at this one. There, yeah, there are shortcuts, but if you don't see the shortcut, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll get there at the, at the end. What number goes in there? It ends in an even number, so we know a 2 goes in there. So 2 goes into 14 how many times? 2 goes into 4 twice. This is goes in further. It ends in an even number, so 2 goes into 7 with 1 left over. 2 goes into 12 six times. It's an even number. 2 goes into 3 once with 1 left over. 2 goes into 16 eight times. It ends in an even number. 2 goes into 18 nine times. Nine is three times three. Yes, I, no, this is the hardest part because you have to remember your, your multiplication rules. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, well, that's what I have to get to. Yeah. So we have two times two times two times two. One, two, three, four twos and two. So in pairs. There's a pair, it can come out, right? Here's another pair, it can come out. It can come out. There's nothing left inside there. Two times two is times three.
which is how it works. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, if your multiplication skills are, are sharp, then we know that 144 is made up of 12 times 12. Is there, there is no wrong way of doing it. If you see that 144 is 12 times 12, it occurs twice, so the answer is 12. Or you can take it out this way. Again, there is no wrong way of solving it. There's just the wrong answer if you get it wrong. So far, so good? Any questions? Do some more? Okay. You want to do some cube ones and other ones or just square roots? Square root of 342. What number do we know goes in this one? We know this is it ends in an even number. We know that 2 goes in there. Oh, okay. 2 goes into 3 how many times? One. Once. With 1 left over. 2 goes into 14 7 times. And then 2 goes into 2 once. Now what? 171. Can we divide it by 2? No. But we can divide it by 3. Because if you add up the numbers, 1 plus 7 plus 1, 1 plus 7 plus 1, that equals 9. And that number is divisible by 3. So that means 171 is divisible by 3. 3 goes into 17. Five times three is fifteen, so we have two left over. Three goes into twenty-one seven times. How about fifty-seven? Can we break that any further? Seven plus five is what? Well, twelve is divisible by three, so we know three goes in there again. 3 goes into 5 once with 2 left over. 3 goes into 27 how many times? That's as far as it goes on that one. 19 is a prime number. So this number is 2 times 3 times 3 times 19. Do we have a pair? So that one comes out. Giving us with 2 times 19. Teen times 2. 2 times 9 is 18. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1. Your answer. You, you still seeing it or?
So what number do we know goes into 54? Two. Two goes into five how many times? With one left over. Two goes into 14, seven. Seven. We know what number goes in there. And we know three because two plus seven is nine, so we know three goes in there. Three goes into 27 how many times? Nine is two times three times three times three. You see a pair, so we take it out. And what's left inside is 2 times 3, which is 3 root 6, right? What's the final answer? We're going to do these until you see a pattern. What does this mean? There's two of a kind, so the answer is? This one. Five, since there's two of a kind. You see it now? So anytime you see a pair of numbers, that's the same thing as having it squared. If it's squared, the square root and the square cancel each other out. So if I had 10 squared, the answer is 10. If I had x squared, the answer would be? Because anytime you have a square in a square root, they cancel out. They're inverses of each other. It works no matter what root you have. Cube root of 8. 8 is made up of 2 times 2 times 2. If this and this are the same, they cancel out. So it all disappears. They cancel out. Pretty good. So that's the connection between the two. And of course, as we go through in math, we'll, we'll figure out if I gave you this, what would the answer be? For right now, what do we know that this means? Five X's. I need to have three of a kind. So the answer is X cube of X times X. This stays inside. So it's X there.
two. Two. The answer is not two. Was that? You I think you said it right. So we have six X's in there. Here is one pair, here's two pairs, and here's three pairs. Right. So there's one cubed and there's two cubes. X and X, which makes it X squared. But you have to be right, we have to put them in groups of three. <laughs> in the wrong spot, yeah. So basically, all, you, all you're really doing here is whatever's inside here, divide it by that. So if I had fourth root of x to the 16th, what is 16 divided by 4? Is whatever's inside here divides by this. Numbers here? Two. two divided by two is one. Yeah. <coughs> so there you have it. That's that's as hard as it gets. You got some more or are you okay with it? the same. Rules are exactly the same. Expand these. This one is x, x, x. Mm -hmm. You can do it both ways, but if you don't, if you don't see it just yet. So we need, there's a pair, there's a pair, so we have x, there's one more x inside there, because I need two, two of a kind, so the answer is, It looks ugly when you first begin, but once you break it down, it's all the same. Yeah, we have a number here, so we have to break it down. This is this is an imaginary two, so we need a pair. Here's a pair of twos, so it comes out. Here's a pair of x's, it comes out. Here's another pair of X's, it comes out. So that one's by itself. 
So the final answer is x times x is x squared. Getting easier? Not yeah, obviously easier, but getting more comfortable with it. Yeah, it, it just takes practice. Outside the scope of this course, and you'll never see any homework like that, but I know you guys can do this. Let me see what kind of homework assignments they have here. Yeah, they don't have anything like that. But oh well, I know you guys can do it. What's the first thing you have to do? Break down the number. Eight, we know two is a Two times what is eight? Four is two times two. So it's two times two times two. And there's four X's. Y's. Six Z's. Well, if it's an even number, remember what I say about dividing by two? So we know this one's going to be what? So just six divided by two gives us. Well, we can take it out of the radical. This one's four. Four divided by two is two. So those are the shortcuts. But, you're right, right now it looks pretty ugly. So here's a pair. There's a pair. There's a pair. So that's everything that goes outside. What do we have left inside there? Two. And y. Bless you. We have two x's, so it's x squared. Two y's. Three z's. Now, was that impossibly difficult? Or just long? Right, the more chance of mistake you'll have. So, but if you comfortable with this and you understand it, then the other stuff will be just straightforward stuff. Right, so what's the hardest thing to extend? Class, we just did those square root of twelve. Not in this class. I just want to see. It's not that yeah. impossible. It's doable. Over to thirty.
Break down. Number goes in 30. Three and ten. Three and ten. Ten is made up of two times three times five. Anything to be pulled out? Nope. So that's as far as it goes. Is this number divisible by three? Right. You add up these two numbers, it equals nine. And nine is divisible by three. So it's divisible by two and three. So two goes into twelve six times. Two goes into six three times. Six plus three is nine, so three goes into here. Three goes into six twice, three goes into three once. Three goes into 21 seven times. Two times three times three times seven. Here's a pair, so it comes out. Two times seven. So the final answer is three radical fourteen. That's it. Other than that, you have to practice. Just do it on your own. Okay. Three squared plus eight minus five equals twelve. True or false? Right. Okay, so the three squared first, three squared is what? Nine. Then what do you do? Okay, so nine plus eight is? Yes, yes, keep on going. 17 minus 5? I thought you got to work it out first. Don't guess. I mean, you do it in your head, weren't you? Yep. It's, so when you do it in your head, you have something that you just click. I know you, I mean, you said it right the first time. You said 9, nine plus 8 17, but then you lost track. That was true. Let's try another one. True or false? Hmm. 
division in there. Are you just guessing? Yes, you are. It's 50-50. Just catch up with you. Yeah, false. Who got true? Okay, what do we do first? Order of operations. What do we do first? Division. Let's do division first. So eight divided by two is. Six plus four is? Does ten equal seven? Who says it's true? Yeah. Let's see. Okay. First thing we're going to do is what? The parentheses. We're going to do inside here. So it's 4 plus 5. 6 minus 4 is? Okay. No more. We can't do anything inside there. So what do we do next? Multiply. Multiply before addition. Order of operations, so it's 4, 5 times 2 is 10, 4 plus 10, bless you. Yes, this is the most common mistake students do. Is there. Yep, because they'll see this, this is the most common mistake, so that's why these are beautiful practice problems. Let's talk about symbols real quick. In mathematics, we have what these are called binary operators. Wars. It means two numbers, one before, one after. The binary operators are these. This symbol doesn't mean division until what happens? It has to be a number before and after each of these. If it doesn't have a number before and afterwards, then it's, it's not, not a math equation. It's, a, it's just a symbol. So, for example, that means nothing. Now it means something. Same with the subtraction. Division. That doesn't exist. Now it does. Multiplication is the only exception to the rule. That doesn't have to be there to be there. In other words, 3 times 4 can be written if 
It could be an asterisk. It could be, there's nothing there. There's, if there's nothing between two items, then it's multiplication. Or it could be a dot. In other words, how would you read that? Yes. What mathematically what it means? 3x is not an operation. This is 3 times x. Well, yeah, but how, what operation would you use to solve this? Yeah, so if there's nothing there, and you have two terms next to each other, then it's multiplication, implied multiplication. So that's... Doing more of these will we'll get those confused. First thing I do is what? Eight minus four is four. Next step. Divide. You can't do anything inside the parenthesis, so we read left to right. Since multiplication and division are the same level of importance, you read left to right. Twenty-five divided by five is. Five times four is twenty. This one. What do you do first? Exponent. Special operations first. So 3 squared is? Then what do you do? Multiplication. 5 times 9. Next, we do division. Zero divided by eight is? Is zero. 45 plus zero is 45. When it comes to fractions and zeros, Times two going to zero. zero. It can't zero times. So if zero is on top, the answer is zero. How many times can zero go into to two? Infinite times. So this is why it's undefined. If zero is on the bottom, you cannot have zero in fractions. If you have zero on the bottom, it's undefined. If the zero is on top, then the answer is zero. Well, you'll have it, but when you do have that, it's undefined. If you have zero on the bottom of any part of your problems, then you're done. You can't go any further. Yeah, you're, you're, you're stopped. You can't, it is possible to have it. 
we do stop Sashoya. Nine minus two is seven. Next step. Which one? Read left to right. So we do the first one. Four times one is four. Next step. Eight times seven is fifty-six. From here it's left to right, so it's our audition. Four plus fifty-six. Here's the next one. Right, first step. Parentheses. Fourteen minus eleven. Again, it's only three basic steps for order of operations. Now we have multiplication and division only in this equation. So since they're on the same level of importance, we just do it left to right. 15 divided by 3. F times 2. I'm six. Sixty divided by three. I mean, there's, there's, you can't do it unless you do it. Bottom line, I, I don't like to be just staring at the board. I, I remember, I said I'm going to start having you guys come to the board and start doing these problems to see what you guys know, what you don't know. Also, remember, originally I said all the exams will be online, but all it takes is one person that's not doing their work and having everybody take it in the testing center. In other words, if you're making hundreds on your tests and you can't do crap in class, then everybody's taking it at the testing center. I care about cheating. I don't know anybody cheating.
we're going to do special operations. So I have to do this one first. 